Alright guys, how's it going? This is WWE Movie Maker making my next video, my next podcast. Today we are going to be talking about something that is going to be brand new to this channel. I'm going to be starting to debut some brand new things on this channel. The very first thing I want to debut is the Monday Night Raw pre-show and the SmackDown Live pre-show and then the Monday Night Raw post-show along with the SmackDown Live post-show. What it's going to be here is that pretty much for the pre-show is going to be talking about my opinions on the uh, Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, whatever show is on that day. I'm going to be talking about it, uh, sharing some opinions, talking about some rumors uh, that could be possibly happening, reports about uh, any of the segments or any of the matches that are happening that night. Um, and as for the post-show, you obviously know I'm talking about the fallout the fallout, the post show, everything that happened on Raw, my opinions and stuff, that will most likely be uploaded the next day after Monday Night Raw or uh, SmackDown, Tuesday Night SmackDown is over, um, just because of the time-wise and everything else in between. So this is, you are watching the pre-Monday Night Raw show, uh, just before Monday Night Raw tonight, we're going to be talking about many things, many things. Uh, if you did not see my very first video that I uploaded of this summer, it was just yesterday, August 7th, 2016. Uh, check that out. I talk about a lot of things. Again, I've started to do podcasts now more than YouTube videos, so I will be making longer videos, and I will try to make this one a little less longer because it doesn't need to be that long. It's just announcing things that are happening for tonight and for Monday Night Raw. Um, first of all, we're going to be talking about the WWE 2K17 video game. Now, WWE 2K17 uh, will be releasing later on this year, and there have been many, many, uh, uh, many playable WWE superstars that have been announced already. I'm going to go through some of the list right now. Here's the full alphabetic list uh, according to IGN. Aiden English, Booker T, Brian Pillman, Brie Bella, Chris Jericho, Diego, Eric Rowan, Fernando, Heath Slater, Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, so my, Jim Neidhart, Connor, Larry Zbysko, Nikki Bella, R-Truth, Simon Gotch, Ultimate Warrior, and Victor. Stephanie McMahon also recently confirmed on Twitter that she, Mr. McMahon, and Shane McMahon will also be playable characters in the game. You can view her announcement on Twitter. She says, it's a family affair, catch Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, and I in the WWE 2K17 video game. Um, as for uh, other additions, Brock Lesnar, uh, John Cena, uh, the new WWE Women's Champion Sasha Banks, there's also an NXT edition that grants uh, access to, uh, to superstars such as Apollo Crews, uh, Nia Jax, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Goldberg in the pre-order bonus. Uh, this will be available, WW2K17 will officially be available October 11th for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360 of this year. So you guys can check that stuff out. Um, that Those are the, um, the so far announced superstars that can be playable in WW2K17. On to other quick news before we talk about Monday Night Raw tonight. I did previously talk in my other video about Conor McGregor and the heat he's been getting over what he said on, on Twitter. He pretty much said WWE superstars, wrestlers, there are pussies. And he, that's what he said. He would never join WWE. There is some spike in this. There is some sort of, some sort of something that is confusing because he's been talking a lot about this kind of stuff. Um, this isn't his first time taking a shot at WWE. There could be some sort of angle, some sort of storyline he's trying to start up here that he could be working. You know, uh, maybe WrestleMania 33, maybe next year. You know, this is my this is my imagination. This is just my opinion. I I, I have no idea what really is happening. If he really means this, because you know he's saying this, it pretty much means he's not going to WWE. He's saying this kind of stuff, right? But, on the other hand, it could be storyline-wise. I have no idea. But uh, there are many more tweets that came in yesterday uh, responding to Conor McGregor's tweets. Here's one of the tweets. Curtis Axel. Hey, Conor McGregor. Cool name, by the way. You think you could slap my head off? Come try me. I'd mop your sorry ass at WWE. <laughs> Wonderful. Big E said, Would you prefer to find us individually or have us all line up at once? I know your time is valuable, sir. Kofi Kingston. Yikes. Look at... Looks like Conor McGregor could really use a bowl of bootios right now. Someone hook him up. AJ Styles. I think McGregor could do well in the featherweight division if WWE had one. These disses are coming in good. 
Chris Jericho, okay. <laughs> Sorry, pal, no disrespect to you, but my fights are legit. Unlike the fixed fights you have in UFC, I'll embarrass you. Irony, irony, just the irony in this stuff. Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, anyone can fight with their fists. Try fighting with fashion, walk off. Reply one for yes, two for no, or question mark for maybe. Okay. Bubba Ray Dudley. I will pay good money to see Kurt Angle stretch the piss out of Conor McGregor and make him tap out. Hashtag it's true. All of these tweets coming in just yesterday. And also Kurt Angle, uh, which I said on my previous uh, video, but I'll, I'll say it again. McGregor tweets, I didn't mean no disrespect to the WWE fans. What I meant to say was I'd slap the head off the entire roster and twice on Sundays. This really sparked much, much controversy. Yesterday, Kurt Angle tweeted, very funny little guy, why don't you get your head out of Dana White's ass? I said that yesterday. Natalia and Rusev, well, they tried to be uh, somewhat, tried to diss as much as they possibly could, but this is what Rusev said. So much talk for a guy who fights 15 minute matches twice a year. Good for you, Connor McGaver. McGaver. Na Natalia, he's a smart businessman, very smart, just like my cat. I don't know if that was a diss. If you're trying to say that he's like your cat, is your cat retarded? I have no idea. Is your cat smart? Well, you said very smart, but how smart is your cat? Smart, if you're, if you're comparing with Conor McGregor, I don't know if you're saying, if you're, if you're trying to insult your cat at the same time. Again, uh, Seamus. Never show Jack Russell a mirror. It thinks it's a majestic Irish wolfhound. Really, just an annoying wee yapper trying to sell tickets. Ric Flair had the most to say, calling out McGregor for shitting on the very people who inspired his brash attitude. Okay. Ric Flair, coming from a guy who built a career copying my persona, I expected the type of class we get from Ronda or Anderson. Ric Flair also said, after Diaz finishes you, I dare you to try guys like Dolph, Brock, or Fit. Oh, you're welcome for the gimmick. If anyone doubts whether or not Dolph could tie Connor in a knot, do yourself a favor and Google his accomplishments. And then again, Sasha Banks said, yesterday, bring it on the most simplest thing you could possibly say uh, to respond back to Conor McGregor. Well, these are some of the tweets. People are pretty much saying that, is this an angle for McGregor? Is McGregor going to be part of WWE soon in the uh, in the years to come? We have no idea. Possibly could be, possibly not. I don't know uh, whether that's confirmed or not yet. Uh, along with the stuff, um, many people are saying it's pretty much the WWE universe, the WWE superstars versus Conor McGregor. Now, that's a, it's a funny little storyline to think of. Uh, so, again, Conor McGregor getting heat for the stuff he said. I still don't understand why the hell he said this stuff. If you want to hear my opinion on this, you can uh, check out my previous video that I uploaded August 7th, 2016, just yesterday, back again from the uh, long, busy-ass work this year for the summer, and uh, you can check that stuff out. On to other news now. Again, tonight is WWE Raw, but before that, before we talk about Raw, there is possibly possible spoiler new WWE Universal Championship leaks online according to WrestleZone it looks like the design for the new WWE Universal Championship belt has reportedly reportedly leaked online uh, so reddit user Divizzle also known as the belt guy from belttalk.com posted a report on the WWE Universal Championship belt this user in the past has typically been quite reliable when it comes to new surrounding WWE belts you hear that guys I don't think you can uh, I don't think you can uh, not trust this guy. You can easily trust him. The report is that the WWE Universal Championship belt will look virtually identical to the WWE Heavyweight Championship belt, except it will be red to represent Raw, and then also put it again, it will be blue to represent SmackDown. Uh, apparently, I think there will be... There could be two Universal Championships, um, but again, this is red to represent Raw, and this is blue to represent SmackDown. You can go check it out on WrestleZone.com slash news. Um... This was actually uh, apparently before it was rumored. It was rumored, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and now it seems like it's a possible spoiler. It's, it could be confirmed. It's not confirmed yet at all, but it does look like that is a possibility for the WWE Universal Championship. They have not revealed it yet. Maybe they could reveal it at SummerSlam. Maybe they could reveal it the Go Home to Show um, just just one week before SummerSlam. Again, SummerSlam, 21st August 2016 at the Barclays Center, New York City. Now. As we get into Monday Night Raw tonight, let's check out s the preview for Monday's Night Raw tonight. First of all, we have Mick Foley, who invited 
SmackDown Live General Manager Daniel Bryan. So, on what the preview has to say about Mick Foley inviting Daniel Bryan to Raw, here is what it says. After Randy Orton's Raw invasion to ambush Brock Lesnar prompted the Beast Incarnate to launch a shocking counterattack during SmackDown Live, Raw General Manager has invited SmackDown Live General Manager Daniel Bryan to visit the Red Team this Monday night. What will the hardcore legend have to say to the yes man now that the rivalry between the Viper and the Anomaly brought chaos to both brands? That's Brock Lesnar. You won't want to miss what's sure to be an eventful face-to-face -face meeting between Team Red and Team Blue's general managers two weeks before the, uh, the biggest event of the summer. Um, there also talks about what are the best ways to get Daniel Bryan involved involved with Mick Foley and how to really make him stir the pot some booking decisions for him so you know according to Forbes.com we have Brian is still one of the most popular personalities in WWE and his presence on Raw will not only help drive fans to Smackdown but it will also further the storyline which I was talking about earlier Lesnar and Orton despite the Beast not being scheduled to appear the thing is that this is probably one of the most um, <coughs> things that are going to be talked about uh, on Raw tonight uh, Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton and you know their rivalry and how uh, the general manager is going to be talking about that because again invasions have happened uh, the past week between both those brands so here's one way Daniel Bryan can be booked Bryan versus Foley gets heated for the first time since Raw and Smackdown went their separate ways the leaders of each brand will come face to face due due to interruptions on both shows by Lesnar and Orton now the uh, now between the brands uh, they can truly begin to form the relationship between Foley and Brian has been friendly, but they warned the WWE Universe that they could become bitter enemies if that's what is best for business. On Monday's Night Raw, the interaction between Brian and Foley must get heated. Foley has a legitimate grip that Orton showed up on Raw to attack a franchise player like Lesnar before the big SummerSlam match, and Brian has a right to be angry after Lesnar showed up on SmackDown to exact revenge. While the meeting of the minds should start off with good intentions, it must devolve into a shouting match. Just before the two former wrestlers come to blows, Brian should collect his things and depart with a strong final comment that indicates a war is brewing between the brands. You know, that is a good way to create tension, no doubt about it. It is, it is a very simple way about going, uh, of going about it. Um, but then another, another way they could book him right here says, Brian causes tension between Foley and Stephanie McMahon. So, Brian shows up for Monday Night Raw, you know, and will undoubtedly cause tension between the respective general managers. But the real tension should come from the relationship between Foley and Stephanie McMahon. So, you know, Stephanie has always hated Daniel Bryan from a storyline perspective, you know, and even with Foley trying to stay professional, you know, um, to be invited for the SmackDown general manager to be invited on Raw, you know, the real confrontation should come when Stephanie McMahon enters the picture. I mean, then Stephanie is going to start hating uh, Mick Foley because Mick Foley is going to act in a in a sort of a professional manner. And then while Stephanie McMahon could just kick Daniel Bryan out of the building. After Bryan is sent away, McMahon and Foley will likely have an issue with each other due to how each handled the situation from there. The animosity and animosity between Stephanie and Foley could begin to grow and cause a power struggle in the heel-face dynamic. Okay, in my opinion, I'd prefer the second option much more than the first. Because the first is a very simple way about going about it. I mean, yeah, you could, you could have both of them legitimately hate each other. But I think... And that isn't really going to solve uh, much problems, according to, you know, like, Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. If they're going to be talking about Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar, they need to at least uh, be on the same page. But then Stephanie McMahon could get pissed off at Daniel Bryan and kick him out. And now, you know, you want, you want, uh, you want high ratings, you want views? Well, then have Stephanie and McFoley, you know, trade comments to each other and later in the future we can have maybe possibly something um, like Mick Foley booking Raw and then apparently Stephanie does not like what you're doing and then you know it's it's sort of a battle on one brand that that is even more better and you know it's all because of Daniel Bryan stirring the pot so wh what the um, what the outcome could be is that they're trying to do what they can on Raw but now they're having battles between each other Stephanie, Ma Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley and now Smackdown's progressing Yet Raw is dying down. You know, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's something they want to do. Now Raw won't completely die down, but it, 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 there there there's going to be like issues, a lot of issues, and um, 
between the and superstars and Stephen McMahon and Mick Foley. So maybe Daniel Bryan's motive is to really cause confusion, stir the pot up, and really cause issues on Monday Night Raw just to enhance SmackDown. That's a possibility. Um, but again, WWE has been the one to really switch everything, really change up everything. Whether it's shocking, exciting, weird, retarded, whatever it is, their segments, their 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 storylines have always been uh, unexpected as of late. So we can't really expect much out of what's going to happen tonight, but we can expect some, and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, as for uh, SmackDown and Raw, there has been a a pretty much a match, another match announced for SummerSlam. Big E uh, suffered an injured last week on Raw uh, when he was attacked, when the New Day was attacked by uh, the club, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and he suffered a groin injury. They're saying this is a work, this is not a legitimate injury, but a title match has been announced for SummerSlam. It's going to be the New Day versus the club. That is officially been announced just this morning, 11 a.m., 12 p.m., and uh, uh, we will see how that progresses as well uh, tonight on Monday Night Raw tonight on Monday Night Raw. Other stuff to keep an eye on for tonight's Raw pretty much is Jericho and Kevin Owens. You know, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. Uh, Jericho Kevin Owens is back together and nothing can stand in their way except perhaps Enzo Amore and Big Cass in the midst of their push or the fact that Y2J already turned his back on Kevin Owens once and the prize fighter has a history of walking out on tag team partners. Yep, the prize fighter Kevin Owens, uh, this is what I pretty much predicted. Um, I think it is pretty much going to be, if they do the tag team match tonight, then I have no idea what the hell they're going to do for SummerSlam. But I think it probably most likely will be, you know, uh, Big Cass facing Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens could come out or something like that. They're going to have support on each t on each side tonight. But as for the tag team, it's going to be Chris Jericho KO uh, versus Enzo and Cass, Enzo and Big Cass. And it's going to be at SummerSlam. Uh... Uh, again, I, I'm not sure. I think Chris Jericho's done after SummerSlam around that area. And so Kevin Owens turning on Chris Jericho probably makes the most sense. He's a heel, right? Probably going to screw around with Jericho before he leaves. Makes sense storyline-wise. Uh, also expect Nia Jax and Braun Strowman will likely continue to beat the holy shit out of Jobbers tonight. Um... Uh, Cesaro also earned a future title shot with a win over Sheamus last week, but I guess he has to wait until after SummerSlam if he wants to try and claim the Universal Belt. In the meantime, he and Sheamus looked like they still wanted to be violent with one another, so they have that going for them. You could see more title matches for them for sure. Um, but that's after SummerSlam because right now Seth Rollins and Finn Balor are scheduled to face uh, each other at SummerSlam. Uh, the Intercontinental title is being taken up. Miz and Apollo Crews. I hope Apollo Crews wins. And the U.S. title is being taken up by Roman Reigns and Rusev. Another thing to look forward to, which is more than Sami Zayn can say, although he did look good in losing to Rollins last week, so he was really good. That, that was a good match, pretty good match on Monday Night Raw. Titus O'Neil can beat Darren Young, but if he lays another hand on Bob Backlund, he'll see what turns his former tag team partner angry again. So, again, it, it looks like Darren Young and Titus O'Neil are going to be fighting... Um, at SummerSlam in a in a personal feud together, it was former tag team partners. Now they are rivals. So, I, th I guess that's what's for SummerSlam. Golden Truth. So uh, you can expect them to be playing some more Pokemon Go. It's the same kind of shit we saw last week. Seriously. Um, Heath Slater went to SmackDown looking for work. How will Jinder Mahal follow up on the win, which earned him a Raw contract last Monday night on Raw, two weeks before SummerSlam? You know, no one really cares about Jinder Mahal on Monday Night Raw at this point, because they've seen what he's done. I mean, you know, guys like the great Khali, you know, I swear he was supposed to be back for the brand split, and you know, no one really cares about these guys, because you're just bringing in more people to fill up spots on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or wherever you're going to be drafting them. And that's an issue because they they don't have any momentum. You're not going to give them any momentum. You're not going to give them a gimmick to work with. And and even if you do, how, how are you supposed to believe you? You screwed these guys up many years ago and now you're putting them back here and you're trying to put them in main event storylines. We know you're going to shit on them eventually. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what you should be looking forward to tonight's Raw. Brian and McFoley expect a lot. Brock Lesnar is not scheduled to appear tonight, but who knows, Randy Orton? I don't know, I don't think the invasion angle is going to happen tonight, but certainly Daniel Bryan, Mick Foley to look forward to, along with the Women's Championship, the Women's Championship, Sasha Banks and Charlotte, uh, 
And this match will most likely also happen at SummerSlam, and we expect to have that feud continue tonight. And we will hear more on Big E and his injury and all that stuff. All in all, uh, SmackDown and Raw, according to Bleacher Report, who has won this week in the production ratings in the producing the show it seems as raw and smackdown are one and one so far two weeks ago uh raw the beginning of the new era was amazing and then the smackdown wasn't as good last week smackdown was much more better than raw so right now it looks like one and one neck and neck and it looks like the new era is off to a good start so ladies and gentlemen please tune into monday night raw tonight uh it seems like it should be a really good show we will continue to keep you updated and i will post a post Monday Night Raw show, the fallout, the results, absolutely everything you need to know and absolutely everything you should know for what happened on Monday Night Raw tonight or what happens tonight. And I'll post that tomorrow, Tuesday, probably in the afternoon. And then SmackDown Live as well, SmackDown Live pre-show and SmackDown Live post-show will be posted tomorrow and Wednesday. Thank you very much, guys, for listening to the debut episode of the pre-Monday the pre-Monday Night Raw show. See you all later.